All right, so I'll tell you, being an independent artist in Atlanta, black artist, is very hard, very hard. I don't work for the government. I don't have a corporate gig. I don't work for a nonprofit. I work for myself. And when I speak, I speak on behalf of those who work for themselves. You know, and that's a different thing. That's a totally different thing in comparison to, to someone who is dedicated to the arts, someone who's passionate about the arts, but it's not your nine to five. So that's a different conversation. And when, that, when that's your nine to five, you eat what you kill, feast or famine. You eat what you kill. And that builds up a certain amount of grit and a certain amount of character. As an artist who works in Atlanta, as Atlanta being my base, Atlanta is global. You know what I'm saying? Like, like wherever I am traveling in the world, when I say Atlanta, people's eyes light up and they say, Atlanta. Oh, Kiba, you from Atlanta? Oh, Kiba, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's one of them things where, but you come back to Atlanta, and Atlanta doesn't even recognize you on that level until they recognize you elsewhere. So Atlanta's had a ton of talent come through here, and that talent had to leave. You know, it's, I, can, I can rattle off quite a few different names, you know, and of all disciplines, where it's, damn near impossible to earn a living here in Atlanta as a full-time working artist. Like, you can find yourself, you know, really, really turned off from working, working here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I found myself kind of turned off. Because you find out it's not really about talent. It's not about creativity. It's not about skill set. What Atlanta's become is it's like a popularity contest. It's about who's the most popular, who's, who's viewed as the most popular, according to a certain number of social media likes, followers, you know what I'm saying, uh, views, and those in positions to move the institution of black art forward in Atlanta, they're basing it off of those numbers and they're not basing it off of the creativity and the skill set other people there buying into the popularity. So when you look at a lot of these um, organizations and nonprofits and, you know, they're, they're moving down a wrong pipeline in order to really make Atlanta what it needs to be. It's being ran by those who don't know what they're doing anyway. So one, they don't know what they're doing. Two, they're basing it off of views, likes, and who's the most popular, where I can name a number of amazing artists here in the city amazing black artists here in the city around the city of Atlanta. But they don't get the opportunities because they're not as popular as some of your, you know, names that you may throw out there. And that's a problem because everything has become so, so based on the celebrity and not based on the reality of who's dope as hell. You know what I'm saying? So you end up with these folks who keep getting the same opportunities over and over strictly because of the, the illusion of popularity. And it's not about their skill set or even the, the level of interest that you really have in their work. Because honestly, you can, you can go into some of these spots and you'll go right to sleep. You know, you probably got to snort your line of cane before you get in there. Because they'll rock you right to sleep, man. And I've spent my money. I've done my time. I've I've made it super, super credible when I put things out. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what it is, man. It's it's not it's not a game. The thing ain't no game, man. It's not me doing it because I want to be the cool guy at the lunchroom table. Nah, I've been the cool guy at the lunchroom table since I was in middle school. Before then, so I'm not bouncing around Atlanta trying to be, hey, I'm Mr. Popular. You know what I mean? Because that whole popularity contest thing. If I wanted to be the most popular person in Atlanta's art scene, I could do that with my eyes closed. 
easily. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, but that's not, that's what Atlanta's become, but that's not what's really, really, really needed. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're an educator and you take that route, I have a number of peers who go that route and say, hey, I'm gonna be a professor, I'm gonna be a you know, high school art teacher, I'm gonna do, but that's great and I'm not knocking that because that's important, you know what I'm saying? But you're not a full-time professional artist. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the full-time professional artist. So a lot of people uh, take, you know, they take, they take issues with some of the things I say and some of the things I do because if you're not a full-time professional artist, then you don't even know what I'm talking about. Because you get a guaranteed paycheck every, you know, every two weeks, every week, whatever your pay schedule is. And it's not based on the realities of the art scene. So you can show up at your leisure. You can do things as a hobbyist. I said, that's not knocking anybody who has a nine to five, you know, as an educator. Because we need that. But your grind is different in comparison to the person who doesn't have that nine to five paycheck and they're grinding this artwork out. They're grinding being a creative. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a different muscle that you have to work. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of those who are grinding this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's a better way of doing this. You know what I'm saying? But imagine, imagine being a high flying, high producing, high energy football player working at, you know, working as a PE teacher down at the local high school. And then, you know, the Falcons, that's the NFL team, right? You know what I mean? So you can have this great player who's a PE teacher. Every once in a while, he can come out and go, you know, play a game here and there. It doesn't add up. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't cross over. Because if you're a professional at whatever it is, that's what you're doing all day, every day. Others like me who do this in real time. And I'm not saying doing it as a hobby. And I'm not saying doing it at your leisure. You know what I'm saying? Because those are two different people. Where when you do this for real, all the time, that's a different type of muscle. You know, and like I said, I'm not knocking anybody who has a nine to five. If you're working within the corporate space, if you're working within the government space, if you're working as an educator, I'm not knocking you. You know what I'm saying? But I am going to say that you don't really get the level of dedication needed. You know what I'm saying? On the other side of the ball.